I'm going to go now to Matt Turner. Now, Matt, I've known for a number of years, at least maybe eight or nine now. And Matt is, um, his brother sat right here in the front row. Hey, Seth, good to see you. Um, Matt Turner is on this panel because um, he was really inspirational to a lot of young millennials uh, for the last six, seven years, trying to bring a millennial voice to some of the deliber policy deliberations for Santa Barbara. And uh, we felt there was two reasons why we had to include the millennial voice tonight. One is the obvious. That's the next generation. And if we haven't figured out what we're going to do for the next generation or what the next generation needs and wants, we have not solved the problem. We've kicked the can down the road. So that's one reason why Matt's here. The other reason Matt's here is because when you look at the questions about millennials and you start to factor in that Amazon is coming to town with people that make more than $100,000 a year and they don't have housing either. And that's going to be on our doorstep relatively soon because that's where they're going, the Sachs building. Now, if that's happening and we don't take into effect that it's happening, what do we do with all the millennials we already have that per the, just the, the thing that Lucretia just said, I mean, can't afford the housing we got. And even what do we do with the people who come to town who can afford the housing? like Amazon employees, and it's not all, but many of them. So with that in mind, we said, Matt, would you come to us tonight and give us some thoughts? What does it look like from a millennial lens what we're dealing with with the housing in Santa Barbara? Matt? Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you, Ronaldo. Thanks, Christy, for inviting me to be part of the panel tonight. Uh, yeah, so my approach tonight is really going to be focused on action. Um, I've been in this community for about seven years, and I've had my own challenges with housing, which I'll get into here, but my focus has really been around organizing people to create change, and I think that's really what this issue um, is about, and I think it actually can be a catalyst to creating a lot of other change around it. I see it, I've been a lot of, involved in a lot of conversations around community development, especially around State Street's development, and what's going on on State Street with businesses out of, out of commission and vacancies and homelessness and <clears throat> a lot of different issues. And in those conversations, it's become apparent to me that this issue, creating millennial-focused housing on State Street and right around State Street, could be a catalyst to creating a lot of those changes that the city's looking for. So I'm going to focus on that tonight very, very clearly. These are the three things I'm going to cover, why I care about this issue specifically. Number two, why this issue actually makes sense and could be a catalyst. And number three, what action steps we can take leaving tonight to start to move this forward. Uh, first, why I care. When I moved here about seven years ago, I was one of these people that came here and didn't have a place to live. And I put a picture of Butterfly Beach up because I basically lived at Butterfly Beach for about two years. Um, whether that was in my car, sleeping a block away, or I'd find housing for a month and that would fall through, or I'd find a place to stay, or my girlfriend and I would live together, or I'd live with my brother and that wouldn't be consistent enough. And so Butterfly Beach basically was my home for about two years. I really love this place. So I wanted to put a photo of it up there. But I really relate to this issue because I've gone through it, and I think that's something that keeps us from making change sometimes, is we don't include people that are going through the issue and creating the solution. Um, so out of all the things I work on in this community, this issue kind of tugs at my heartstrings a little bit more, and I really empathize with people that are going through the situation because of that. Um, Hustlers, this is a group that I started with my brother um, in 2014. And what this group is about, and I was living in my car at the time when I started this group, because I didn't want to wait until my housing was taken care of to figure out how I could serve the community. So we created this team uh, called the Hustlers for Humanity, which teams people up to serve the community together. And over the course of the last five years, we've worked with probably about 100 nonprofits in Santa Barbara. And we are a team-based approach to volunteerism. We take on big issues. We work at fundraisers. That's how I got to know Christy and I got to know Ronaldo, as we, we started setting up chairs at Ronaldo's events, his monthly, his monthly mixers and um, and that's what we did we just got involved and we have about 500 people in the group um, and it's growing very quickly and here's a little bit about the service we do we work in all sectors of the community we do beach cleanups we work with homelessness we work with human trafficking survivors we work with climate change issues it doesn't really matter whatever the people uh, need whatever people want that join our team we get involved and now we're expanding that group to other cities. Uh, San Diego, our, we launched a chapter there this year, and we'll be launching a chapter in Boston next year. And um, secondarily, that's led to another platform called Serve Community, which is around uniting communities around service. So the reason I bring that up is I, I really care about this issue, and I work in a lot of communities around the country. And I see a lot of the same challenges, but I also recognize solutions that are happening that we could bring here. And one of those is 
really bring millennials into the center of the city as a catalyst that really does make a difference. San Diego is a place that I've been spending a lot of time as we started this new chapter, and Little Italy is a place that I've been hanging out in, and I'm actually looking for a second place down there because of this group is taking off and I need to be there more. And the reason I put that up here is this is a really great example of a neighborhood within San Diego that is really taking off. And the reason for that is they've, they've built a lot of younger focused housing right on the downtown sector within a block or two of the main drag and all these booming businesses are going up and the, the, the energy is incredible just to hang out there. And you see people hanging out morning, afternoon, night and it's incredible. It's, and, and so here are some of the benefits that I put up there and why people are drawn there is it's, you know, it's packed with energy, it has all these developments, has um, lots of things to do for people. There's collisions, you bump into people, it's walking distance, there's scooters, there's bikes, there's ways to get around. So when when younger people specifically move to a new community, they're not looking to live off in the suburb and have a home to themselves. They really are looking to soak up the best of what that community has. And Santa Barbara has a really great, rich community. It's a draw for people because of the weather, because of the climate, because of the people here, because of the opportunities. And I see us missing an opportunity because we don't have any housing on State Street. And what that does is it leaves a void energetically, which gets filled by the homeless community because there's nobody else there. So the truth is we already have housing on State Street. We just don't have homes on State Street. People are already living there. <laughs> so why does this make sense? Like I said, we, right now we have homelessness and we have vacancies, but we could easily see that as an opportunity to shift into housing and bustling businesses. There's a growing millennial population, as Ronaldo alluded to. We have uh, Amazon is moving to town. Sonos is on State Street already and is doing incredible. Procore is expanding and new people are moving to town. I bumped into an employee of Alexa. Uh, Amazon's, Amazon now has Alexa here as their headquarters for Alexa. And this guy's one of their new employees. He got just hired out of college a year ago. And he said there's about 120 young employees that are already here. And he said in the next six months, there's going to be 300 employees here. And so I told him a little bit about this issue, and he's living up in the Riviera somewhere, renting a cottage on someone's property. And I mentioned this issue. I said, would you be interested in living downtown if there was housing? He's like, of course I would. And I told him, we're looking to put together an event specifically around this issue, around millennials and housing. And I said, would you and any of your employees and your coworkers want to come to that? He said, every single one of my employees, would, my coworkers would show up at that event. You let me know when it's going to be, and we'll have 300 people there. That's what he said to me. Because as Ronaldo alluded to, these are people that actually have salaries, but they're still struggling to find housing. And where do they want to live? They want to live downtown so they can walk, they can see each other, and they can enjoy the nightlife. And, and, he, and here's a quote that I pulled here that I think really sums this up. Each great mo movement of population in some presents a new opportunity and a new task. And wisdom consists in taking advantage of the movement while it's still fluid. And we're in the middle of that movement right now. And that's why I was saying this is a real opportunity for innovation that we're in. So we didn't, we didn't miss out. And this challenge is actually something good if we take advantage of it. Um, so what do millennials want specifically? And I touched on this a little bit. We want to change the world and be involved in the community. We want to meet each other. We want to collide with each other. We want to be hanging out at coffee shops and at restaurants and bars. We want to enjoy the best of the city life that Santa Barbara has to offer, or whatever city that happens to be. And let's see, in my millennial housing needs. We'll get into a little bit about what millennials really want in their housing. It's not a lot of space. We're willing to forego parking. We're willing to forego a lot of the things that previous generations needed in their housing. It's not really about the life within the four walls that we live in. It's really about the community outside of those walls. We'd rather live in a smaller unit because we're not going to spend as much time in anyway. We'd rather live near our peers or with our peers, maybe sharing common spaces. We don't need a car necessarily Necessarily. We're willing to forego that as long as we can get around effectively. Um, so these are just some of the things that we want, and I think this is something that's missing from some of the conversations I've been in, and this is something John Campanella on the Planning Commission has really done a great job of, is trying to pull younger people into the conversation. Because there are a lot of conversations happening in the community around this issue, but oftentimes younger people are left completely out of those conversations. And it's really time to bring them into the forefront of those conversations so they can be part of creating those solutions and how the city wins. This is a, I studied a, a report for this presentation, and, and I'll give the, uh, the reference to it at the end, um, but uh, this is a great quote from a, a planning developer, an economic planning developer in Phoenix, about 
the benefits that they noticed. When they turned their focus towards creating millennial housing in Phoenix, they noticed an unbelievable um, b boom of activity, but all these side benefits that they didn't necessarily see happening. And I listed a few of them here. Um, they're more connected to the community. They tend to be on more boards and commissions. They get involved in the city governance, actually, if they can be downtown and feel a part of it. They like to be part of creating the solutions, whether that's the downtown strategic plan, uh, they go to city council meetings and planning meetings, they like to be involved in shaping the city and the structure, and it's, it's actually benefiting Phoenix for years to come. And I think that's something that we could really bring to this community um, as, a, as a side additional benefit to figuring this issue out. Number three, action steps, and we'll close here. Um, I'm a big football, big sports fan, obviously, so I had a little shout out to my, my New England Patriots right here. Um, but there's a, there's a phrase in football that I think is really appropriate, and it's something we bring into the Hustlers, which is a team-based approach to community, which is moving the chains. And what that means is, for those of you who don't know football, is there's this thing called the first down chains. So the point of football is to score touchdowns, but you don't try to score a touchdown on every play you actually focus on getting what's called the first down, and you move the chains forward bit by bit until you score. And this is something that I think is missing a lot of times in community change, is people get so overwhelmed with the big picture and the long vision and feeling overwhelmed by how to figure that out that we forget that it's really about making incremental change and moving things forward. Um, and social change is the team game, just like sports. And, and this is what I see as being a recipe for creating projects that work, is we need property owners, and starting with one, we need the right developer, we need the right plan for that property, and we need support from the city. And if we had that, we could create one-by-one one successes that would actually move this forward. So we don't need to create 10 or 20 properties right off the bat, but we do need to create one. So I'm hoping there are some people in this room or that we can, leaving this event, we can start to pull a team together of people in, a, in different positions that can start to create successes. Because even if we created one success, one millennial focused property that hit a home run on this, that would lead to more because there would be less fear from the other developers and property owners that this wouldn't work. But we do need people to step up and be part of the solution and start to create successes one by one. And there are two types of people. There are people that say, but this, so no, but this won't work, so no, or yes, and maybe I have a concern, maybe there's a challenge. And what we're looking for is these people. <laughs> you can be either one of these people, doesn't really matter to me, but we need yes and people, because these are the people that actually create change. And now what? Leaving this event, we're gonna be doing a follow-up event to this, um, which we haven't created the date for, but it's specifically gonna be focused on millennial housing solutions. It's gonna be hosted at the Youth Interactive. We're gonna be doing it over the next month or two. I will get that date to this whole community through Christy. Uh, we've already talked about this, um, but if you'd like to be part of that, I would love for you to come out and give us your feedback and be part of it, because it's really about, like I said, moving the change forward one event at a time and one project at a time. So I'm, I thank you for coming out tonight. I appreciate you guys showing up and being part of it. This is this is moving the change forward. So you guys participated in the first down tonight. I'd like to get this to the end zone. Great, thank you guys. Okay. So now you know why we invited Matt. <laughs> uh, and I got to add personal, personal testimonial. When he first started uh, Hustlers seven, eight years ago, I said, you know, Matt, I love, I love what you're doing. Can you give me a different name? I, you know, us, us boomers, the idea of hustler. Did, he goes, no, I can't do it. That's what it is. And then when my son joined the group, our millennial son joined the group, he goes, Dad, this, this hustlers group is great. And I'm going, oh, apparently no negative for him. <laughs> so congratulations, Matt and Sat, for doing that. And that you're 500 strong is fabulous. Really grateful for all you do for this town.